How resistant is Warhammer 40k Space Marine power armor? Hey, Marcus here, Sword and Sci-Fi Guy. People say that the Space Marines in Warhammer 40k are the most OP soldiers out there. In a previous video, I covered how the strongest Astartes are stronger than the strongest Halo Spartans physically. But can their armor take a hit? Space Marine armor is made from adamantium and plasteel plates wrapped in ceramide. All of those are magic sci-fi space metals that do not exist. However, just like modern and medieval armor, it has weak points and strong points. Those strong points would be the chest, back, and shoulder pauldrons. Those are incredibly protective. The 40k rulebook Imperial Armor Volume 2 has a rare comparison to modern steel, and these points on their armor would be equivalent to either about one for one the same thickness of steel but lighter, or three times the thickness of steel if it's an area protected by adamantium plate. By my calculations, looking at the armor, these toughest points are about 5 inches thick, so equal to about 5 to 15 inches of steel, 127 to 381 millimeters. For reference, the 35 millimeter Bushmaster autocannon is able to penetrate about 80 millimeters of steel which is pretty much 3 inches of steel at a 60 degree angle. Now, it's important to note that this isn't a tank cannon. It's an infantry fighting vehicle, less powerful than a tank. However, rounds like this can defeat tanks if they hit in just the right armored places. So Space Marine armor at its best is better than some parts of tanks. The Black Library book Nightbringer corroborates this by a Space Marine taking shots from a gun similar to the 35mm to the back, completely unscathed. Now it's important to note that I've only talked about traditional cased projectiles, an RPG, probably one of the weaker rocket-adjacent projectiles, can penetrate with the right warhead 750mm of steel. That's enough to go through one side of Space Marine armor and out the other side with more than enough force left over to bring down somebody behind them, even if it hit in the most protected spot. A javelin or the cannon of a main battle tank would also wreck them, not to mention something like a Hellfire missile from a Predator. However, they can be taken down by much smaller guns. Remember how I said that only their front, back, torso, and shoulders had that level of protection? Their weak points, joints, neck, and eyepieces are more susceptible to damage. While we don't know exactly what these points are made of, at least I haven't found any mention, the thickness puts them at about half an inch. Since they're probably not made of adamantium, it's likely equivalent to half an inch of steel. Steel that thick can stop standard 7.62x51 NATO rounds, meaning it's about equivalent to modern level 3 body armor. To put that into perspective, the weakest points on Space Marine armor are almost as protected as the chests of modern US soldiers. This is also corroborated in a few books where lucky shots to these areas with auto guns with AP ammo usually, which are about equivalent to 7.62 NATO AP, can drop Space Marines. 7.62 NATO armor piercing rounds can penetrate about 0.8 inches or 20 millimeters, more than the half inch protection of their armor at the weakest points. So on the high end, they are incredibly protected but on the low end, kinda meh. In addition, ceramite is a ceramic, and in 40k lore and the real world, that absorbs energy really well. As such, Adeptus Astartes armor resists energy weapons better than it resists slug-type weapons. This is an interesting justification for why it's said that the generic lasgun, which is purported to be about as powerful as a 50 BMG rifle, has about zero effect on Space Marine armor. I haven't calculated how powerful those flashlights really are, but the fact that a real 50 cal would be better suited to fighting space marines would be a factor to consider. I also want to point out that my calculations are not official canon, however I did arrive to these conclusions using canon information. If you found this video interesting, then here's a video where I break down how powerful 40k plasma is and if it's really as hot as a small sun. 